whole crop, love it or hate it. Today we're at Harper Adams to look at the whole crop trials run jointly by Biotal and NIAB. And to take us through this, Biotal's technical manager, Roy Eastlake. Right, Roy, just tell us what we've got in these plots, if you would. Well, in this section, please, we've got the six species of spring cereals, um, all grown in replicas of three, so we can harvest over a period of five specific weeks. And then when you do harvest, you take it away and don't make a big clamp, you put it in tiny pot clamps, do yes, you? Yes, because of the volumes and because we're harvesting so many samples, we put it into what we call mini silos. So we chop it, put a treated inoculant on it, and then weigh it and put it into a little small container, a mini silo, and we'll open that again in three months' time. So that's when you'll have the results of what these trials are, should be showing? Yes, we'll then open those, take sam representative samples out, and they'll be sent to laboratories for chemical analysis. And what exactly are you looking for? Is it, is it yield? Is it, is it, is it uh, a mixture of things, uh, the best diet? Or what, what, what do you hope to come out of this? Well, we're looking for a mixture of everything that you've said and more. We want to identify a lot more information on this wonderful, flexible crop for farmers. At what's the best stage to harvest it, to get digestible yield, to get starch yield, and to get total yield per hectare off it, and what diet it'll then fit with. So we're looking for a lot of answers that we've never had before. We've well, not had those before. Is that a, a shortcoming of whole crop in general, do you think? I don't think so. I think we've developed whole crop. And farmers are now har harvesting whole crop at a lot of different stages. So we're just wanting to put the facts to those to what they've been doing already. And would, would farmers be looking to whole crop particularly in dairy situations for, for the scratch factor element of whole crop? In some cases, yes, Peter, they would be, but in other cases, they might just want a digestible stem if they, for instance, they have a high maize starch diet, or they might want a starch diet if they've got a high grass proportion in their diet. So it's, it's different situations with different, different cases. Now, Roy, you talk about the flexibility of whole crop, but a lot of people have turned to maize in the past years. So how does it stand up against that competition? Well, Peter, maize is a wonderful crop for dairy cows, an excellent forage for dairy cows, but in a lot of parts of the country, they can't grow a consistent maize crop. Also, we've always been going on about maize being a consistent high yield where they can grow it of roughly about 18 to 20 tonnes per acre of fresh weight. We are already identified in our wheat at 30% dry matter, we're getting similar yields. So we're identifying at different stages we can get comparable yields from a crop grown a lot earlier and harvested a lot earlier. So for those people who've been trying maize and we've had one or two disappointments over the last year or two, should they be looking at whole crop again, do you think? Yes, I think so. I think whole crop is very flexible. We're going to identify what's the best stage to take it for that particular situation. They're harvesting in a normally a much better weather window with the opportunity of planting a follow-on crop, such as stubble turnips or something like that, for, for young stock. So it gives a great deal of flexibility in the way they can manage forage on the farm. And you talk about taking it at the right stage, and, and most people possibly would be looking at winter wheat for their main yes. whole crop. crop. Um, what stage would we should be we, we be cutting that at? Again, it depends on the mixture of forages within their diet. As I've said, a high grass diet, you may want a higher starch whole crop cut at a slightly later stage, around the 40, 45 dry matter. But a higher maize diet, you might want digestible stems. You might cut it at 30 to 35 dry matter. So that's what this trial is going to identify, specific details such as that. So the conventional advice to look for that doughy, cheesy stage may want some moderation. Yes, for different specific situations, yes it may do. All right, and you talk about different crops, now you've got a range here of, of different crops, one of which I see is the barley and peas. Yes. Now, how, how do they complement each other as crops, and what is the resultant silage analysis going to be like? There's a spring barley and pea mixture. Um, the benefits of doing that is one is the spring barley um, comes, gives you a nice yield, of a, a nice starch level, and the pea amongst it will raise the protein by about 25% in that crop. So not massively, but you'll go from about 8% of spring barley protein up to about 12 to 14% in the barley pea mixture. So it gives you a little bit of extra protein. It also gives you some residual nitrogen back in the soil for follow-on crops. So a good, good mixture. And can you get the two complementing each other in, in growing terms? Or do, does the, do the peas get swamped out with a more vigorous barley? No, as you can see there, they've actually got a nice mixture. You can see the peas poking out at the top um, with the barley mixed in it, and they complement each other. They harvest at about the same stage. So uh, it's a good mixture for, for, and a very palatable mixture for dairy cows. OK, right. Now, one of the problems people find with this, is whole crop that is, is that when they come to ensile it, they find it somewhat fluffy and diff difficult to compress and some end up putting it under grass silage anyhow. Is that a problem to getting, to getting a, a compact silage clamp? 
Yes, very much so. It depends on the dry matter of the crop we're harvesting. So for instance, the higher dry matter uh, cereal crop, uh, it's much drier, it's like cotton wool to try and compress it. So there we would advise you cut it slightly shorter and compress it very hard. And in that situation, a direct cut of a, say a second cut or a third cut grass to go on top of that clamp to seal it would be a good idea. Other situations, you may be cutting this green, in which case, again, you can chop it at a relatively short length, but you'll be able to compact it tight enough on its own. So again, it depends on the stage you're harvesting. But we're gonna hopefully make recommendations to, to clarify all the certain areas that we're harvesting at. And, and one of the problems, or one of the fears some producers may have, is that using whole crop, they will lower the energy density of the diet. Is this a problem? Well, one of the things we're trying to identify in this trial is a better way to we can analyze whole crops. In the past, we've not had enough data on the analysis of whole crops, and they tend to come out low energy, mainly because of the straw component in the stem. Because we're harvesting at different stages, we're going to do a lot of analysis work. We're going to hopefully get better calibration data, get higher data, and then prove that it's also intakes of palatable silages can get over any energy deficit. So I'd rather have a higher intake of silage than a higher energy and a lower intake. And I suppose if they wanted to raise the energy element of it, they could cut the crop a bit higher, could they? Exactly. Again, we've always suggested that for many years in maize, by cutting it higher to leave, leave the lignin in the field. And again, you could do the same with cereals. Just be a little bit more careful on cereals. that You're turning that crop more into a concentrate crop than a forage crop, the higher you cut it. And one of the advantages of whole crop, it, uh, and people use it for this, is there's a break in a continuous grassland production. So it's an opportunity to clear weeds and, and, and reseed. Now, I believe you've been doing one of the trials here with undersown grass into barley. Now, we've done this at home, and I must admit the barley's more or less swamped the grass, and we're wondering whether the grass will ever come through when the barley's taken off. So is it a successful way to, to reseed effectively? Yes, it is, if you're taking whole crops. So again, what you want to do here, we've got a sample of barley undersown. In this one, we've already cut one of the trial plots, which would be the ideal time to cut it. So this is getting slightly more mature. If you left it for combining, the grass would be struggling then because it's so dominant in there. But if you're cutting it for a whole crop, a fermented whole crop, the grass is still vigorous. You'll get about eight to 10 tons an acre of your barley off, and then you might get a late grazing or a later cut from your grazing. And it's well established. So, you know, again, depends on the time of, time of harvest. And I know you've not finished the trials yet, but have you already had any surprise results so far? Yes, we have. We've certainly had um, surprise results in the way that the dry matters have changed. We thought dry matters would always be incremental, raising all the time. But when you get wet weather, dry matters go backwards, which sounds obvious now you think about it. Um, and also then the plant might get a growth spurt. And again, the dry matter can come down again. So the dry matter has been quite variable, which has been a surprise to us. And finally, those wanting to take it up and maybe plan ahead for next year, have you any advice for them? Yes, start early. We, we, we sh hopefully we're not going to have this information ready for the autumn plantings, but the farmer should be even thinking about next season's cropping plans now, at the rotations, at what they want, and also looking at forage security. I think it's going to become critical in the future dairy industry to reduce costs. So planning a whole crop where you know it's going to be more secure than perhaps a variable maize in a late autumn or even a grass in early spring will help give you a greater forage security. So plan early. And you would advice would be if those that have not tried it before, perhaps give it a try next year. Yes, it's a cost effective crop to grow and it feeds well, it's a mixed forage diet, it stimulates intake and it gives you great flexibility in your forage plans. Thanks very much Roy. Pleasure.